When Disney oh. debuted its newest race swap bastardization for Peter Pan and Wendy, when they decided that they were going to race swap Peter Pan, they're going to race swap the Lost Boys and make half of them girls. And you, you got a problem with that? And then also race swap Tinkerbell. It didn't go over very well with fans. You saw this ratio. This is something that's going to be exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see any box office numbers for it, which I wish we could. I wish they would release this in theaters. But as you can see, at nearly a 10 to 1 rate, uh, 456,000 dislikes to 47,000 likes. And this was actually really, I, I think, one of the first ones we've seen where more backlash, like from publicly, from like, I, I guess the woke community was almost like, you know what? Hey, you know, we asked for a little of this. But we're kind of tired of it. Disney faces backlash over race swap. Black Tinkerbell would rather have new POC characters. And you saw a lot of this. People finally saying, Hey, you know what? Disney doesn't actually care enough about black people to give us characters. They're just giving us sloppy seconds from white people. Mm -hmm. Disney couldn't care less about making new stories with POC characters. They just put POC people to play white characters. And that shows how lazy Disney is and how racist this is that they don't think they deserve their own. Same thing here. Instead of giving POC their own movies or making new movies with POC characters, they decided just make white characters black for some reason. Well, they're continuing to make this worse because the actress who plays Black Tinkerbell, Jeremy, is speaking out. And oh, she's of course saying she is. That of course Disney, she is. They're not just plugging black and brown people into these spots. They're intentionally doing this to give us the fairy tale we deserve. Jesus and Christ. I don't know, Yara Shahidi, I actually think you deserve more than that. I actually think you deserve more than sloppy seconds from white characters. I think that you deserve better, but you don't. So I guess that's where we are. It's interesting that you see uh, pronouns and bio people saying the same shit we've been saying for the last few years. And now suddenly it's a little more acceptable. It's almost like that happens pretty often. It's almost like we told you guys that the sequel trilogy, you know, it didn't have a plan. And then by the time we got to the Rise of Skywalker and they pretty much abandoned everything that was set up in The Last Jedi because they didn't have a plan. Then The Last Jedi fans were screaming and crying and whining because why? They didn't have a plan. But of course, saying they didn't have a plan before the freaks, I guess, figured it out. Well, that, that was racist and sexist and toxic and we were just being negative. But here we are once again, right? And now you see a lot of these uh, social justice activists are even saying all the stuff we've been saying for years. But it was toxic when we were saying it. Now, suddenly, you're starting to see we were exactly right. Disney, Lucasfilm, Hollywood, they don't care about black people. They don't care about diversity. All they care about is their agenda-driven bullshit and their lazy attempt to give it to all of you weirdos that keep screaming about representation. You know, maybe we should just put pronouns in our bio, Jeremy, and then we'll be able to say all these things yeah, and not yeah. get any backlash. I don't know. Yeah, I heard that. I heard um, that. Now, she goes into this interview and she talks a lot about her college experiences and African-American studies and all this bullshit. Till finally gets to this. Met with praise from the interviewer over the, how the House of Mouse latest casting habit indicated they were moving in a more inclusive direction. Shahidi then attempted to claim, and somewhat nonsensically, that her appearance in Peter Pan and Wendy was not a lazy attempt to virtue signal, but rather representative of a cultural desire within the company to repackage their old products for new and diverse audiences. God. Quote, I talked to the director of Peter Pan and Wendy about why he and the higher-ups at Disney wanted to retell this story, and I loved his response. They wanted to bring some new fun to this classic, but also give us the fairy tale we deserve. It's evident they're not just popping black and brown folks in the cast for the sake of updating the story. Instead, it's about creating a story that so many more people can see themselves in after we've been left out for so long. Oh my God. You absolutely are just popping black, black and brown people in. That's what you're fucking doing to these stories. And please stop pretending like we haven't seen black people in media, like we haven't seen brown people in media. And... The idea that you're celebrating taking this already established white thing and that they're just race swapping it and turning it around, that's giving you the fairy tale you deserve. It's a fucking joke. And I, I don't understand this shit. Uh, Jeremy, when I watch things on TV, I, I didn't sit there and say, you know what? I like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, but I really want an entirely white remake of it. That's really what I would love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air for. 
And it's so weird that we see that in current day uh, social media. I don't know. A absolutely. Just like when you were younger, you would say that about, you know, there's tons of, of black sitcoms that, that we would watch and, and they're very enjoyable. The same Cosby with like, show black family matters. Like, yes, come the fuck on B black. And then there's, there's on, and on the flip side, there's, black you know people that watched shows like home improvement or you know, seinfeld or F full house they fully enjoyed it because it's not about this stuff and we have to they, they're preying on the mentally ill and the mentally weak is what they're doing that's what they're doing with this stuff like, like they are they and and they want to find these mentally ill people they want to prey on them so they can make them be these victims they just continue to push it and push it and push it and eventually it's going to pop and and i don't think we're like really close to the pop yet but we are it, it, we're moving in that direction slowly but surely this will not last forever this will be an era where people will look back on and go how the hell did this happen and i know it's hard to believe that, that that's possible but it is and i i do believe that we're going to look back on this time and and recognize how nonsensical it is it, it will happen like, and a lot of us already sustainable, are. right? Like th this shit like is showing that th people are getting over it. When again, like you said, when you're getting a uh, backlash from the black community, when you're getting backlash from the woke community, when, when you're getting backlash from the people that like this stuff, you think that that's pandering to like that, that, cause th let's be real. That's the audience you're targeting when you do things like this for your more div diverse and modern audiences. Mm -hmm. And they're telling you, nah, this is kind of bullshit. Like we're kind of getting tired of this. We re realize your game. You're taking these things you've done before and you're just inserting black and brown people in it. That's all you're mm -hmm. doing. Um, it's not sustainable. Now in terms of Disney, we know that they're like one failed movie on Disney plus doesn't mean shit for them. Uh, they've got a lot of other stuff going on. But when you're looking at the landscape of entertainment industry, all these live action remakes that Disney's doing, it is going downhill in terms of popularity with the way that they're going about this.